Well, probably the first heresy that could be described as a Trinitarian heresy would be Sabellianism. And this is the belief that the Father, the Son, and the Spirit are all exactly the same entity. So a man, we don't know very much about what Sibelius actually taught, but um, a man called Praxius, um, who was attacked by Tertullian at the beginning of the third century, taught that the Father became incarnate. So the Sonship is just basically the Father's humanity. And the one who died on the cross was the father in human form. And this was attacked by Tertullian on the grounds that the gospel plainly doesn't say that. The gospel plainly represents the son as a distinct person from the father. But a similar heresy was taught in Rome at the same time by a man called Noetus. So this would be a denial, really, that there's even a binity. There's not even a distinction between the father and the son, let alone a distinction between the Father, Son, and the Spirit. And the people who held this position accused what we now would call orthodox writers of being ditheists or tritheists, that's to say people who believed in two gods or people who believed in three gods. Because, of course, it's still fundamental to the Christian doctrine of the Trinity that there is only one God. This is a great paradox, that the Father is God and the Son is God and the Holy Spirit is God, and they're not the same as each other, and yet there are three of them and there's only one of God. You know, how can those three be distinct from each other and yet identical with this one being called God? That is the great riddle of the Trinity. And the way the Sibelians solved it was by saying, well, they aren't distinct. Really, the three, the, um, the Father, Son, and the Spirit, are just different names for God, as it were, at different times in the story. Now, once it had been clearly established that there were three distinct hypostases, the great danger then, as the Catholic tradition would see it, is that these three were not equally recognized as divine. So what we call the Arian heresy maintains that really only one of these three beings is God. And the second person of the Trinity can be called God, and indeed he is called God by Arius, but he is only God because God the Father has conferred upon him the attributes of divinity. So whereas God the Father has all the attributes of divinity by nature, he is by nature and eternally omni, uh, omnipotent and uh, omniscient and omnibenevolent and so on, the Son has all these attributes because the Father chose to confer them upon him. And also the Son hasn't existed eternally. You can't quite say he was born in time, according to Arius, because Arius thinks that time only came into being with the world. But you can't describe the Son as eternal either. In some way or other, the Father existed before him, and the Father created him, uh, as well as begetting him. Now, the Council of Nicaea was held primarily, uh, well, at least its creed was formulated primarily to condemn Arius. And so the Council of Nicaea asserts that there never was a time when the Son didn't exist. And it asserts that the Son is of the same being, homoousios, with the Father, and therefore rules out one of the things that Arius taught, which is that the Son was out of nothing. But even the Nicene Creed didn't decide all the things that we now regard as part of the doctrine of the Trinity. It quite probably, for example, didn't forbid the term created. So people who signed the Nicene Creed could still assert that the second person of the Trinity was created by the first person of the Trinity, provided they didn't say that he was created out of nothing or didn't say that there was a time when he was not. But Athanasius, the Bishop of Alexandria, who became Bishop of Alexandria shortly after the Nicene Council, strongly maintained that if you believe the Nicene Creed, then that's just not consistent with believing that the second person of the Trinity is created. You must say that he was begotten, and you must say that his relation to the Father is analogous to that between a human father and a human son, in the sense that they have the same nature, but not analogous in the sense that a human father is always older than his son. That's not true, but it is true that the son and the Father in the Trinity have the same nature. And this was the opinion that eventually prevailed, so by about, say, 50 years after Nicaea, anybody who said that the second person of the Trinity was created would have been called a heretic.